I have read some scary books this year and I'm not gonna gatekeep. Hi everyone and welcome to the video. I hope you're all doing really, really well. I actually can't believe that it has been nearly a year since I last filmed a horror recommendations video. It's just wild to think that the past year has gone so so quick but I have read some amazing books in that year and let me tell you if you thought the books were scary last year wait until you see what I've got on my sleeve for this year I'm just gonna start getting into the recommendations because I cannot wait to share them with you guys and I really really hope that you manage to find your new favorite scary book Halloween is approaching and I'm excited. Without further ado, let's get into the recommendations. The first one that I'm gonna recommend is a favorite, and that is The Troop by Nick Cotter. If you hate body horror, this book will scare you and creep you out. So the book is about a camp scoutmaster called Tim Reese, who takes his scouts to a camping trip in the Canadian wilderness for three days, and they're on a desolate island where you have to get a boat across to get there, and they're pretty much alone in a cabin until they're not alone anymore a man who is absolutely starving hungry comes to the door he is eating anything that he can find and when Tim opens the door he's a little bit freaked out but he lets the man in because he's a scoutmaster at the end of the day and he's a nice guy but I think being nice was a big mistake there Tim because that man is <laughs> infected and he is infected with something that has been bioengineered and is inside his skin and body as you can imagine it does not go well for anybody on a desolate island where they can be quarantined you know there's no one coming to save them oh some of the scenes in this book were so disturbing they made my skin crawl genuinely I felt sick some of the gory explanations in the book are like nothing else I've ever read in my entire life if you're a Nick Cutter reader you'll know what I'm talking about some of the images will be burned into my little brain for the rest of my life this one really managed to get to me and not a lot of books do that because you know I read horror all the time and this book was definitely something special the next book that I'm going to talk about is one that I really thoroughly enjoyed and it is The Sundown Motel by Simone St James this one is a spooky ghost story and I absolutely adored it First of all, let's talk about the cover. The cover is absolutely stunning. I love like the picture of the motel on the front. Honestly, probably did pick this book up for its cover, which I know you shouldn't do, but it also had a little tagline from Riley Sager, who was one of my favorites. And it says, deliciously creepy, chilling and chilling it was. So this one flicks between two eras. It flicks between New York in 1982 and New York in 2017. A woman called Carly starts working at this motel and she has an ulterior motive. Her auntie Viv actually went missing at the Sundown Motel in 1982. So she has gone to find out what happened to her auntie while she was working there and you get the two timelines. So you get Viv and you get Carly and Obviously Carly's sort of trying to unravel the mystery and Viv is living the mystery and it is so good. The imagery in this book is very scary. It's definitely a supernatural sort of thriller horror. You get ghost scenes, you get twists, turns, and it was honestly incredible. So, so fun. I loved reading it. It's one of those books where you finish a chapter and you want to go on to the next chapter immediately because you just want to know what happens. And yeah, it was just absolutely great. Such a fun read for Halloween. It has that rundown eerie motel and I love this one definitely give it a read the next book that I read and loved was kind of slasher that was Daphne by Josh Malaman this book was so terrifying and I'm not saying that lightly it was really scary like the whole premise so basically it's about this girl called Kit Lamb who is on her high school basketball team and she's very popular she's really good at basketball and she's ready to go off and live her life after high school but the night before the big game, one of her friends tells the story of Daphne, who is sort of like a myth around the school. She She's the sort of like ghost story in the town that everyone knows about, but nobody speaks about her and there's a reason because apparently if you speak or think, even if you think about Daphne, Daphne she will come and kill you. What the hell? That's so terrifying because obviously if you're scared of something you're going to think about it all the time so the fact that Daphne comes when 
you're scared or thinking about her that is so scary because it's like the more you don't want her to come the more you think about it and then the more likely she is to come so that is just a terrifying premise in of itself this whole book absolutely creeped me out i actually listened to this one on an audiobook so as you can imagine i was scared for some reason hearing it made it so much more scary than if i was reading it in a book kit lamb was actually being told about daphne in the story and you were being told about daphne from the audiobook so in my head i was just like that's terrifying it felt like i was hearing the ghost story i just had so much fun with this book it just hit. I really felt like I was immersed in the story and I don't know if that was a good thing. Definitely give Daphne by Josh Malaman a read if you are ready to be terrified. Another book that I really really enjoyed reading this year and it's actually one of those books that I would love to be made into a film was The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This book is what I've been waiting for my whole life. One of my worst things when it comes to horror films specifically is home invasions. So this book was just like my favourite type of horror film in a book and it was incredible. The last word is about a woman named Emma who goes to live in isolation. She's house sitting on the beachfront so it's very idyllic and seems like the perfect place to live. She loves reading crappy horror books. I can relate to that. I love reading horror books. She loves reading the crappy ones, the crappy ones that like no one wants to read. So she reads this one book one night and she thinks it is that bad that it deserves a review and she leaves a bad review for it. The author then pings her back and is like, take this review down. This review is a lie. Take it down. I'm not happy with this. You're ruining my life. She doesn't take it down and they go back and forth a little bit and she just thinks that's the end of it until she wakes up in the middle of the night and finds on her ring doorbell footage that a man in a terrifying mask was standing outside her house. Things get worse, basically. <laughs> the house is no longer safe and she has a gorgeous golden retriever called Laika and honestly it's one of those where you're just like please like don't let anything happen to this dog it just unlocked my worst fears you know those movies where it's like a huge house and they can run and hide in all these different rooms it kind of had those vibes it was just incredible it was suspenseful it made my heart pound out of my chest i would highly highly recommend reading this one it's one of those where you know you're sat in your house on your own after reading it and you can't stop thinking about some of the scenes and then every single sound that goes off in your house you just jump in it was really really good it really did get to me. The next book that I want to recommend is another one of my favourites that I read this year. This one was so scary and it sort of gave me whiplash. I didn't know what way the story was going. It was really great. It's a really short read and it packed a punch and that was The Patient by Jasper Dewitt. I think someone actually recommended this to me in the comments on my last video so thank you so so much if that was you. I loved this book. It was everything. So without spoiling too much, this one is about a young psychiatrist who goes to work in an institution and in that institution he meets one of the most dangerous and prolific people in the institution who is a boy who was admitted back when he was a child because he used to get night terrors and his issues have evolved over time and unexplained things are happening because of him. It's the story of this young professional trying to treat him and what he discovers along the way. And it is so scary. The actual character is like so manipulative and just scary in every single way. And it's definitely not what you're expecting for a book that is that short. Every single page is scary. The whole mood is scary. Obviously it's set in an asylum. So it's very eerie as it is. Everything that cracks off in this is just so terrifying and I was so scared reading this. I actually pretty much forced my husband into <laughs> reading this book and even he enjoyed it and he is not a big reader. We loved this one and we would definitely recommend. You will not want to put this down once you start reading it. So, so good. I also want to talk about Petrified Woman and The Gatherings by Jeremy Ray. Such good books. The Gatherings is about this sort of it's like a cult and they all go and meet up together and things go down at this cult that then creates a bigger impact and it's terrifying again body horror kind of like sci-fi aliens and there's some huge twists in it so i would really recommend that one and then petrified woman is about a woman who is dating a guy who always plays pranks on her so she thinks for his birthday she's going to play the ultimate prank she's going to hide in his closet and jump out and scare him. They basically just scare each other, you know. 
And so she does that. She arrives at his house early and he is an artist. So he has all of these wooden statues of women around his house that he has carved and he names them all. And she first found them creepy, but now she's sort of grown to love them and grown to accept them. And yeah, she really likes them now. So anyway, she hides in the closet and she's waiting for him and she hears the door unlock and he comes home with another woman. So obviously she's really hurt, but she's also thinking maybe he's just playing a prank on me. Maybe he found me out and he's just sort of tricking me. She continues to just hide in the closet and things go south to say the least. While she's in that closet, she sees some unsavory things happen and yeah she's stuck in a position where she's trapped in there that is just the scariest premise ever it's a novella that i will remember forever i would be bloody petrified if i was her as well speaking of short stories as well i also read a collection of short stories recently on kindle unlimited by sammy scott called at home with the horrors this is a collection of short stories and then it ends with one longer novella at the end and these were incredible one of my favorite collections of short stories that i've ever read every single one was impeccable i'd give all of them a four out of five or five out of five stars in those books there's always a couple of stories that are a lot weaker than the others but this one had none it was incredible one of my favorite stories was called scared mary and again it was about a boyfriend well a husband who would prank his wife because he recorded her being pranked one day and he uploaded it to youtube it got loads of views and he basically wanted to continue that success so he keeps scaring her and then obviously the scares get worse and worse because he wants to make the videos better and better and she is sort of caught in the middle of everything there's a huge twist at the end and it's so good the novella in that book as well is incredible it's called Emile Bones and it's about a woman who's starting a new job in a library and she finds this book in the returns pile called Emile Bones and it basically is this story about a boy called Emile Bones who will come to you and haunt you and not leave you alone if you read the book and she starts hearing some weird noises in her house and some weird happenings start occurring and her son starts speaking to someone in his bedroom and it's so scary every single story in that book would recommend even if you just read one or two to get you out of a reading slum any of them in that book would be incredible i could literally talk about that book forever it's so so good the next book that i want to recommend is by one of my favorite horror authors ever if you guys have watched my videos before you'll know who i'm talking about out because I read everything he puts out and that is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I just have to show you as well my copy has the most incredible signature and he even drew a little ghosty. I love it. I'm so obsessed. I love this. This book is about a woman called Louise who she unfortunately finds out that her parents have passed away and she really does not want to go back to her family home to sort out all of their bits and bobs because one, she doesn't want to deal with her brother Mark who she's never gotten along with and who is obviously entitled to what she thinks half of the house and their mother and father were also very into crafts, puppets, dolls. That straight away tells you the tone of this book. Creepy dolls, creepy puppets enough said if you're scared of that kind of thing this book is the one for you if you want to be scared this halloween and even if you don't this book was just so so fun let me read you this little bit of the blurb that just cements it it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market some houses don't want to be sold and their home has other plans for both of them read it also i listened to the audiobook along with reading this and the voices impeccable so this wouldn't be a book recommendations video by me if i didn't include anything by this author and this one i read not too long ago and absolutely loved it was definitely eerie it scared me it was a wild ride it was twisty and I'd really recommend this for halloween i actually think it's probably more of a thriller only one left by riley sager and probably more of a thriller than a horror but i wanted to put it in this video because it was so eerie do you know when you just don't trust anyone in the book the whole atmosphere for me was very scary like the big house it's about this woman called lenora who lives in this big house that's like jutting over this huge cliff she's actually known in the town because she was never charged but everyone believes that she murdered her parents and sister 
when she was younger and she's now old and she needs care but nobody wants to care for her because of obviously all the things that they think she's done. A uh, girl called Kit is put on the case and she starts looking after Lenora and Lenora starts telling her story to Kit through the method of a typewriter and it's again full of twists and turns, amazing. I was sat there just ripped. I wanted to know every single thing about Lenora and what happened and it is perfect for October and yeah I kind of wish I'd waited to read this during those like gloomy months because it would have hit the spot so much more. It's really eerie. Give it a read and let me know what you thought. Okay this book terrified me and this one is Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak. This one is so scary and the artistry in the book like the illustrations is terrifying. So this one is about a woman called Mallory who goes to work as a nanny at this huge house with this lovely child and she gets to live in this little outhouse outside and it's basically the perfect setup. The kid loves her and starts drawing her pictures but the pictures start getting more and more creepy as they go on and Mallory finds out that a woman might have died in her outhouse and she feels like this woman may be trying to communicate with her through the pictures of this little kid. I'm gonna have to show you some of the pictures because they're so creepy. Okay I've just found one that's really creepy. Look at this. I'm sorry. If a child handed that to me, I'd be running out of there. I would be down the road, like as fast as you could say, thank you, I'd be down the road. And the pictures only get more detailed and more scary. So as you can imagine, it's terrifying. Definitely give this one a read if you want to be terrified this Halloween. I absolutely pooped myself at this book and everything about it was amazing. The twists, the turns, the creepy photos, the creepy atmosphere, the haunting kind of element to it. It was great and I loved it so much. The next one was absolutely crazy and the book I'm talking about is Sundial by Katrina Ward. Oh, this book gives me chest pains and <laughs> it threw me through a loop. I think back to reading it and I'm just like, what the hell happened? This book is marketed as a psychological horror and that is the perfect way to market it because it really messed me up. It's about a little girl called Callie who collects the bones of animals. She can speak to them, she has loads of imaginary friends and her mother Rob is really worried about what this is doing to her other daughter in the meantime. So she decides to take Callie out to her old home of Sundial, which is basically this huge barren land of desert, there's no one around, and when she gets there she has to make a terrible choice. Oh god, it was horrible. This book was so, so scary. You learn a lot about Rob's past, you learn all about Callie, their family, and parts of this book were so upsetting and I think I will say with this book, if you are someone who cannot under any circumstances read about animal abuse, don't pick this one up. It's pretty much a theme throughout the whole book. If you don't mind reading that and you are up for a very psychologically scary, thrilling story, then definitely pick this one up. It was such a good read and honestly, you asked for books that scared you guys, so I'm giving you a scary one and one that is not for the faint-hearted. If you've read The Last House on Needless Street you'll know that kind of writing style and this definitely follows that and yeah, proceed with caution. So the last book I'm going to talk about was actually my most recent read and I loved it so much and that was The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This one again, a thriller slash horror and it is about a author who is renowned who has this huge mansion. She runs a competition where she allows other writers to come into her mansion and you do a writing retreat with her. So obviously everybody tries to enter and you know our specific characters end up getting chosen by loads of different means and when they're there they realise that this writing retreat is not what they expected and is actually much more scary and terrifying than they ever thought. I love this one because they're actually all horror writers so it was sort of like Inception you know like a horror writer writing about horror writers writing about horror and it was really really good, it was fun, I was really really scared the whole time, I wanted to keep reading. I mean look at that blood running down. I love that when they're isolated, they're just in the middle of snow or desert or by the beach, they just can't really get help and I really really love that kind of book 
and the writing retreat is definitely a scary book for Halloween. Okay guys that is it for the recommendations. I feel like I've been rambling for long enough. If you guys have read any of these books please let me know what you think. I just love like the creepiness, the eeriness, the scariness. I just live for it and horror is just honestly my favourite genre. Always will be I think. Again please let me know if you have any recommendations for me to read because I'm always looking for new horror recommendations and I do get a lot of my recommendations from the comments of these videos. I love how helpful you guys are like it really really is great and I love that we all just can talk about books in the comments thank you so so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already to see all my future content I am actually going to Halloween Horror Nights this year in Orlando and I cannot wait so if you love horror content definitely do subscribe have an amazing day or evening depending on where you are and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys